Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Adobe Live here on Behance. We have a week of illustration for you this week, and I hope you're ready for it. Uh, I know someone that it is, and that's David, who's on with me today. David Oku, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Maddy. Oh, it's so good for you to be here. And um, again, I'm trying to do that thing where I stop talking in the green room before we go live because yeah. I've looked at David's work already and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to ask you about this and this and this. So I've been trying to save it all for the stream already today. Um, and I can see, you know, we've, we've joined by a great community, David, today. Um, you know, everybody's here. Um, and I want to say, you know, quick hellos. Um, hi, Karina. Hi, Gareth. I know you're looking forward to the colours that you're going to see in today's stream. They are bright um, and they're brilliant as well. So uh, good to see you in the chat there. Hey, Jack. Hey, Joshua. Kirsty's here as well. Michelle, Sandrine. And of course, the legend that is Tim Robest as well. So um, it's so good to, you know, to be back here on a Monday. I'm really looking forward to this, David. And you're dialing it from London, right? So yeah. um, and the week is meant to be bright. I've heard that there's positive weather, you know, you know, lots of good things happening this week, as well as our illustration. So mm -hmm. how are things where you are? All good? No, all good. All good. I come fr I'm fresh from a competition from yesterday. Uh, I would say. So, Were you doing the, the competition with um, with Samsung? I think it was. Yes. In uh, second place. I can't complain. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So George was on our stream on Monday last week. Okay. And George was also in the competition. No, I mean. Um, oh, amazing. So, well, congratulations, David. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's so good. Well, do you know, um, you're in great company today because I could already see in the chat that um, Karina says the work of David is stunning, um, you know, and honestly, you really are in for a treat. Um, David, please tell us about you and um, and show us you know, some of your work and, and give everyone an introduction into what it is that you do. So, hello, everyone. My name is David Oku. And for who doesn't know me, I'll, I'll just quickly bring you through my work. I'm, um, I'm a half Italian, half Nigerian artist, uh, and um, I do a lot of digital illustration, but I come from a heavy background of freehand, uh, freehand freestyle illustration. This used to be my initial style, and it's something related to motivate people, but it's also a concept between my mix ethnicity. So if you see the black and white, it's something that has been a big, uh, a big thing that influenced me to do this kind of drawing. But um, apart this, I think I moved a little bit away from traditional drawing. And uh, now I'm doing more stuff like a heavy, heavy digital, I would say, very bright color, very bold um, things. And uh, I'm actually moving into animation as well at the moment. So as you can see this, uh, I'm doing a lot okay. of different layers. Uh, uh, I don't know, I like uh, put brightness, but I think um, I moved a little bit into animation because sometimes I feel like illustration is something that is always developing and evolving within time. And I think um, it's always best to implement animation within your illustration because it just brings a different outcome. And uh, I'll just quickly bring you through my work. I've worked for different people. I've worked for Shopify, for example. I've done uh, some customization for Nike in collaboration with with Fitness, uh, where I was literally just drawing on everybody's shoes, uh, painting them. Amazing. And uh, then, um, as you can see, I worked for Puma. We did like a very nice collaborative project over the COVID time that um, uh, 10 artists came together to create a concept uh, done only by us. Uh, so, and we came out with a beautiful conclusion. Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't know if oh, wow. I put something with the music uh, or with yeah, the voice. Yeah, it came through. Mind, this it is the outcome. A Very cool. We can just about hear it, but okay. you can see the animation though. Amazing. Mm. 
Ah, I think it's frozen on my um on the page turn. Um, David, this looks so good. I mean, when you click into your website, yeah. um, you can see, you know, the animation in the work mm -hmm. that you do just from the instant you click into it. You've got yeah. your logo at the top turning. And then mm -hmm. as you scroll down into your gallery, so much of your work comes alive. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I've got so many questions for you today. I mean, um, when you're when you're doing this, do you work with an animator to do this or do you do all of this from start to finish? All self-learning. I think, um, that, you know, what is the thing? I think like I got very stuck into illustration for a long period of time. Mm. But then I started to, you see, uh, I tried to develop a style that is in between a 2D and a fake 3D kind of style. So mm -hmm. at least you give a bit more perspective dimension, as you can see in the typography here and yeah. I think the animation thing I just uh, learned tutorial I had a domestica course uh, a quick review but um, I think everybody has his own style in animating I wouldn't define myself as an animator but I would say more like moving graphics if it makes sense but soon, soon to come uh, hopefully finger crossed <laughs> uh, yeah and do you use After Effects to do this do you use Photoshop Def how do you do it definitely because I think Photoshop is good, but I think Photoshop works more like a stop motion, uh, step by step, and the process might take longer in certain cases. And yeah. I think After Effects simplifies little moves are very quick in After Effects. And if it's the only problem might be if your computer is heavy and you have a lot of files on your computer, I think it's just uh, the rendering time can be different from uh, depending how big the composition and how many yeah. elements you want to move into it. But yeah, definitely After Effects is something I would recommend to all the illustrators that want to go one step ahead. You know, it's just uh, it's just great to evolve yourself, I think. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And I think what's great about Adobe Live is that we'll get to see some of your process today mm -hmm. in how you're building some of these things. Um, and I mean, oh, gosh, you know, if you've got any questions for David today, everybody in the chat, please just pop them in the chat and, and you know, we'll make sure that those are asked because... Um, mm -hmm. You know, David's work's amazing. And so um, what have you got um, to cover today, David? What are we going to go into? So for today, I was thinking to go through, to kind of recreate something like this. I'll go, um, I will show a little bit how my process work and we'll, uh, we will just simply try to recreate this somehow or something similar. Maybe it might lead away during the time. I might do something different as well. And uh, I don't know. And let's have a look at your screen, I think, with all of the um, the work. And actually, should we put the link for your website in the chat, actually? And are you on Instagram as well, David? Yeah. Find, um, we can see your um, your work in there. Here we go. I can bring this up for everybody to see. But the colours that you're using are, are so vibrant, so cool. And yeah. um, one of the things, everybody, that we were talking about, David and I, in the green room, where I was trying to, to, to honestly stop myself because, you know, I want to talk about it on the stream, is that um, I've noticed that in the illustrations that you do, when we were starting to look at the trainers or the jackets mm -hmm. and all of the, you know, the drawing, you're giving them um, positive messages to people yeah. in the drawings that you do. Yeah. Um, so what kind of thing are you including? Like, what kind of messages are you, you putting in your work for people? I think uh, uh, it's very different, but I think uh, it's all about positivity for me. And uh, mm. encourage people to not be scared to go on a venture, for example. Because le let's be honest, I grew up in Africa and many times when we talk about the debate of art, there's so much talent, but yeah. um, because it's not considered a very solid career, a lot of people uh, get away from becoming artists. They might go ending up doing different jobs. And uh, the, the fact that I do this positive message is even to encourage people to believe in themselves and not listen what anybody tells them. If, if that is something you love, you should definitely go for it. That's, uh, I think that's the main message I want to portray in everything I do. And if you see the color is just like vibrant, it's a tone, it's something that if you look at it, I was like, oh my God, it's fresh. I love the colors, I love, yeah. because uh, it's all about sunshine, you know? It's, uh, so for me, the brighter it is, the better it is. I love that. Honestly, that for me, that should be a motto that I have on the wall, as next to coffee should <laughs> be, you know, the brighter, the better. I, no, oh, but, but I it's mean. true, it's true. Because, you know, in these days, you don't know what happens. So the only thing you can is be happy, try to be positive and everything will mm. be all right. 
completely agree with you. Oh, this is so good, baby. <laughs> and um, do you know, um, Annika says in the chat, it's so good to see you live because she's seen so much of your work on Instagram for so long. So uh, actually getting to see you live it is a great today. Um, and there are some more questions as well. Um, uh -huh. Jack asks, do you plan for animation from the start of your project in how you set up your files? Um, Mm, yeah, it uh, depends. It depends on the time because normally what I will say is like, uh, let's take this as example. So this as example, yeah. if you not not oh sorry, pardon. So if you see uh, the whole composition, what yeah. I will always say is like you can definitely draw everything as a group, but just make sure every individual element can be either move, then you can ungroup it, and then you can easily separate it at the end in different layers. Yes. And I think uh, that's something I will bring you through, actually. Actually, I was wondering, shall I give it a start? Uh, start to see, uh, give it a go to see if... Uh, yeah. yeah, let's jump in. Please. So today uh, you're going you're gonna to teach us how to create something like that. Something like this, uh, just to see how it goes. And then I always think everybody can put their own twist to it. So uh -huh. hopefully it might help to someone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And I noticed that you've got your, um, you know, your swatches, your colours picked out already for today. Is um, yeah. is this something that you, um, so I do see a lot of these colours in all of your work, if you'd have mm -hmm. gone online. Are they, is this like your, uh, you know, your swatch set? Is this like your brand? Is, is mm, can I be honest with you? I, uh, I think not, because in a certain way, uh, I did that. I was one of the winners of the 36 um, Days of Tide this year. It was fantastic. Amazing. And my whole collection, actually, I'll pop it up here so you guys can see. And my whole collection was based on these colors mainly. And um, it's just because it reminds me a little bit of Bar House, so you see. Um, yeah. The Bar House movement and everything. And I just wanted to keep this as a solid concept, but then I don't know, while I did the whole lettering, the color combination was something sending so, so much out that I just wow. keep uh, uh, going back to it. And it sounds funny, but when you have certain colors, I love mixing colors. You can see even here, yeah. I use a off-tone palette that is not as bright, yes. but you see it's always a warm color. And uh, yeah. if you look uh, here, for example, I put also gradient. And I think sometimes gradient helps you create um, a nice contrast yeah, between indeed. light and contrast as well. So depending that. which color you use, I think uh, you can do it even with retro colors, I think. But uh, actually, I would give a it. good tip to everyone. If people, um, are, I'm good with colors, but I think if people have problem choosing the right color, mm -hmm. um, there are people like um, Topia Tones on Instagram that they always create a different palette of colors on a daily basis. And uh, I always suggest young artists have a look there. So at least you start understanding cold, warm colors, how it works. But it's a great, actually, it's a great account to look if you want to get inspiration oh, or learn from color combos. Topia what Tones. Topia Tones. I'm writing Topia that Tones. down. I always need help. Everyone um, banters me here because um, I, I once burnt bright colors onto their screens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brilliant but um i'm writing this down amazing and you know what we all did i know you know a lot of our community we did 36 days of type yeah. this is where i've seen your work before congratulations thank, thank you i appreciate it so good amazing oh it's so good this what a good day what a good monday this is so good stewart's but that's the second mention of topia tones aha who else has mentioned it <laughs> amazing Oh, so in Illustrator today, and um, just starting off with some some shapes. Ah, Sandrine. Um, actually, I wanted to say, you know, most likely, I normally draw freehand, but this, mm -hmm. I wanted to do this because it's just to show that you don't really need a crazy, if you're not a great sketch guy, or you don't draw at all, I think uh, Illustrator, with this kind of work that I'm doing, you don't need to be excellent in drawing because the shape is literally what helps you do everything on it. So yeah. I will start with the eyes so people can see. Uh, normally the way I work is like, I just do some circles, try to put it here, here. I see. Group it. Then you use alignment tool just to put it in center. And one thing I use often, and I think this is a life savior, the Pathfinder, I think one of the best tool to actually create stuff because you can literally go crazy on it and it always come with different outcomes 
Ah. I see, yeah. I don't use the Pathfinder at all. I started I, using Illustrator on the iPad, actually, and it's yeah. um, it's very different from how I've learned it on the desktop. Yeah, very true, very true. Do you use I, it on the iPad as well? I have to be honest, um, don't hate me for that, guys, but uh, no, I downloaded no. Illustrator, but for some reason, I feel like there are certain things um, not as good as the desktop side, if mm. I can say that, because I move more geek. to um, Procreate, and the only reason is for flexibility, because I draw a lot, and sometimes instead of um, blocking myself more in shape, I like to have that fluid um, mix both of them, if it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no worries. It's good to see... Um, I mean, I pick up so many tips and things. We all do mm -hmm. on the live stream. Mm -hmm. and I was saying uh, to David in the green room before we went live today that I've always got my pen and my my pad ready, writing things down. Mm -hmm. So um, no, it's so good. I could see in the chat that people are asking about um, whether we record these. And all of these will live on YouTube. So you can always revisit the streams after. Um, yeah, definitely. This is taking shape really quickly. Yeah. No, but because it's like, that's why it's just about copy, paste, uh, pathfinder. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite thing then, David? Do you prefer doing art like this? And let's say you're creating something in Illustrator, or do you prefer, you know, when you pick up a pen and you're designing <laughs> those jackets and the trainers and stuff like on uh, actual objects? Like, what do you... Uh, do I you think I love them both because i just uh, really mm -hmm. love creating things so doesn't yeah. really matter if it's digital it's just like i think um you need to kind of be versatile in this industry a little bit it's like because i feel almost like you can be very solid um, in your personal style but i also think it's important for you to experiment different things out of your comfort zone so i think um it's a good balance, actually, because you can always combine them together, traditional and digital. So normally when I do like um, faces or characters or things like this, I normally go into sketch first, then I scan it in, I redraw it digitally. But most of the time when you do it digitally, things might change. It might be a bit sharper. You don't have that um, yeah. fluid uh, feeling. It's more like blocky. So depending on which outcome you want, I will always recommend try a little bit both because mm. uh, you'll be surprised of the outcome that comes from it yeah and i think actually one of the great parts uh, you know of, of the great ways of being a creative is that everything's different every day is different exactly and you can work on so many different projects and so many mm -hmm. different things and get inspiration from so many places you know that yeah. i think it's also funny that you can use the same program the same skill set but if you put two different artists next to each other they will use it very differently but it's the same yeah. thing just with a different vision i think that's yeah. the that's i think the most interesting part actually love that love that yeah absolutely so um how did you come to designing um things like the trainers you know that you did for nike and you did puma and there was uh, um i'll be very honest uh, before <laughs> before my freelance uh, uh begin uh i wasn't really able to maintain myself just by doing illustration at the time but then i met a guy in one of my part-time retail job at the time and he was a photographer he started working for um, with fitness that here in England, like, uh, you know, have you ever heard of them, by the way, with fitness? Uh, it's like a CrossFit gym, but they have a very uh, arty, limited edition, uh, very mm -hmm. family base. Uh, it's very interesting. You should look into That's them nice. as well. And the guy was a photographer, was Will Philenson. And uh, one time he saw my work in the place I was working as a retailer. He said, oh my God, your work is amazing, man. I will literally bring you in uh, to my guys there and let's see if they can give you something. I just walked in one day, uh, I draw on a wall. Then the guy said, oh my God, you're amazing. Why don't you come and host? Uh, they had a collaboration with the Nike chalkboard that people wow. can literally customize their shoe themselves with Posca pen. And they invite me for the event, but it was great because you had many different athletes represented by Nike. Uh, was was just amazing. But it's wow. also ter terrifying sometimes because it's your shoe and you don't want to mess it up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Yeah. Of course. Oh, wow. It's it's mad how things can just change, right? But it's yeah. meant to be completely. I mean, I always believe that. But I think um, that don't be afraid. Just just go for it because you never know what people... Um, sometimes I think uh, when you're not confident enough, it um, pushes you back sometimes. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you just have to go with it. Even if you feel the tension, just go in, walk in it and embrace it because I think that's the only way you can literally survive uh, doing art, you know? Uh, yeah. Because artists like to do the art, but not necessarily social people, always on Instagram or like go mm -hmm. go here with the live events. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually terrorizing. Even the competition, the anxiety kicks in because, you know, it's something that normally, you don't like that attention sometimes, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess there's that pressure as well. But I think it's good to keep yeah. creating. Like we always say this, don't we? Just and we have challenges on Adobe Live that we do. We have mm -hmm. master classes, and we do, you know. So we're, we're always creating, getting inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's so good though. That is so good. Ah, oh, yeah. I've never, I've never drawn on trainers with Posca pens. It came up in a couple of streams. Was it last week or the week before? And um, oh, I really want to do it. You should so, try yeah. it. You should try it. You shouldn't be afraid because I think uh, postcap and a water base so worst scenario you can always wash it off. Uh, it will look a little bit faded with the color, but uh, you should definitely yeah. try. I think it's super nice. Yeah, we should host a stream, shouldn't we? Doing postcap pen illustrations on trainers live. Love it. Uh, Stuart's got a question for you. Uh, does yeah. David free flow like doodling with ideas on illustrations when it comes to layout or structure? Uh, like, do you have a direction? before you doodle. Sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, so yeah, I kind of asked the question, then I rephrased oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I got lost a second. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry me. So, um, so, do you, so when you're doodling, do you mm -hmm. free flow or do you have a structure to your doodle? I really you? have a free flow because I'm a freestyler. So most of the time, uh, I don't know, a lot of people ask me that. I love working on brief because sometimes the brief, uh, is a bit more as a, it's very solid as a brief. So you try to focus on that outcome, but um, yeah. normally on my personal stuff, I just flow with the mind because as a freestyler, I just want to fill up the space. I don't really think uh, as soon as I go, I think, okay, what's next? Let me do, let me do, let me do. It's like uh -huh. a, a, whatever comes in my mind, I do realistically speaking. Yeah. They're cool. And do you have um, go-to brushes that you use when it comes to doodling or um, mm, yeah, anything like that? Not really. I normally on iPad, uh, just the pencil sketching like that. But I'm not really a brush guy because if you notice, most of my work is very solid. I don't really... Um, it's not a lot of texture, not too many brush details like that. It's more like if you do like... a sketch kind of work and you want to put the shading or something like that then it works yeah yeah totally well this is good that eye is just brilliant <laughs> really good nice um you know easy colors as well um no, actually this is actually a, another tool that i use a lot if you go here on the effect the 3d it's just amazing because sometimes you can create amazing 3D shapes just from this, uh, that example. Yeah. And if you see, once you expand it, you can always copy paste. Uh, let me just show you. You see, you can put a stroke, expand oh, yeah. it, cut it out from here, keep the white. And you see, you can create like, there's so much you can create with the Pathfinder because it's such a, I think, underrated tool. Because <laughs> I think uh, you can do really a lot of magic with it. You see, you can put some extra dimension as well. Mm. So you kind of create that effect of there's a hole in a box or anything like this. I've never used it. Yes, it's good. Angus says, I see stickers. Yeah. Yes, I guess. Uh, do you make stickers, David? Is this something that you do? Um, can I be honest? Everyone always say you should put a shop, and uh, but I don't know. I get lost with creating stuff, so I never have time to focus on uh, having a shop. But I try some stickers. It's actually nice. I would love to do just stickers, 
but you know, it's, uh, it's all about timing, you know, if I could follow a shop and do my thing seriously, then yeah, but uh, then I waste all the time just literally drawing all the day. Yeah. Yes, I know that feeling. I know that feeling well. And um, do you know, in the in the image that you shared at the start mm -hmm. of about what we're going to create today, all of those different shapes. You know, you said you put those in separate layers so you can move yeah. them. Each one of those could be stickers for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, Sandrine says we need that sticker exchange board. We need it. <laughs> yes, Sandrine, I'm completely addicted to stickers. I shared a, a picture of the back of my laptop this week, and um, and George, um, who was on our stream last Monday. I said, yep, send me your address. I'll send you stickers. So um, here's the yeah, big sticker game. <laughs> strong, strong game. It's good. But yeah, I see what you, you've used the 3D there, and it, it looks really good. You could see something like an animation, something coming out of that, that box, you know, like a, a jack in the box type thing. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, really good. So how long do you, would it normally take you then to produce, you know, the, the main image that we started with today? Is that, um, yeah, this how long? One? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I mean, sometimes even less than an hour, depend, um, depends. Uh, I shouldn't share that, but, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, uh, depends what you want to do. If you have something, yeah. you can do something very quick. You can make something, you see, like when I showed you the ASIC shoe before, mm. um, because you have a lot of elements that might take a little bit longer because you just have to be a bit smart of what you want to put in it, how you want it to move, if you want something a bit more fluid than just forward and backward movement. So I think it's more about what the, um, what the, outcome, the outcome that you have in mind, depending on that, takes either longer or less time. Mm. Yeah, of course. Each different point, it, it different things, right? It's mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. And how did you learn all of this, David? Is this, uh, you so, mentioned self-taught yeah. earlier. So, uh, it's very self-taught. And I think like, um, you see the example after FX, like uh, till my graduation in university, all my friends told me, David, you should do after FX. And I always said like, oh no, man, it's, there's too many options. There are too many places to look into. I don't know how to figure it out. But I think when you start, uh, when you focus and you say, okay, let me start doing something, it's all about practice, I think. I think the more you, the more mistake you do, the more you learn, the more you can keep doing something. It's almost like I've used Illustrator, I think, more than a 10 year, full 10 years, and I'm still learning things because nobody yeah. really have the full 100% knowledge of it. And the newer the version is, the more things you can do, the more things you can play with. Mm -hmm. There's so much you can learn, and I think uh, it's all about practice. I really spend loads of time on the computer, and I think uh, that's definitely something that helps a lot. But you know, you need time. It's not going to come overnight, but it's all about trying, testing, experimenting things, and eventually something amazing will come out. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's always good to you know, to keep learning. And I, I, I always say this about the streams, you know, that I always mm -hmm. have your pad and pen ready. There's always something across the streams or some, you know, way that somebody will influence you and, uh, yes. and have a, a new process or their way of doing things can be completely different to your way. Yeah. Um, and you could just pick up, you know, new things. Um, oh, definitely. Still lots of chat, by the way, in, 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 the, <laughs> in the chat today about stickers. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'll promise, I'll promise I'll do some sticker very soon. You're so good. <laughs> You're so good. Oh, it's so good. And Kath asks, do you use the blend tool? A lot as well. Yeah. The blend tool is one of my favorite. Actually, actually that used to be my addiction in university because literally, the, let me show you. Like the blend tool for me is just fantastic. It's just uh, depending on what you want to do always, but I think the fact that you can create one shape and blend, it, uh, actually morph it into something else is something mm -hmm. that, I, that I really love. I first saw the blend tool being used um, on a stream for the 36 days of type actually. Yeah. And it was how they were transforming the, you know, the, the letters and things on there using the blend tool. It was really impressive. Because imagine even if you do simple things like this, so. It's just what can come out is just is just amazing. 
And I mm -hmm. think uh, sometimes uh, even with the blend tool, you, yeah, there are many things you can do, like even you can create your own brushes, as an example. I think that is actually something amazing that, yeah, let's say, let's say, yeah. Can you believe it, David? We have been on the stream for 30 minutes already. Really? Oh, wow. I know, it feels like 10 I, minutes. I, 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 I need to week. run. <laughs> I need it's to run. <laughs> oh, don't feel pressure to finish the, no, no. Um, you know, what you're doing. We have a stream, um, or I wouldn't say stream, it's a chat that continues in Discord mm -hmm. um, after the stream. And so this is where everyone chats. So, you know, um, we can always share it in there afterwards or on Instagram, of course. So, okay. You know. So let's yeah. have a look. So normally one thing I love and as when I find out about this, that was a winner for me, is this that you can actually oh, you can create an art brush or a pattern brush. And you can literally let's do a circle, let's see how it goes. You see, you can that create, uh, and depending on what you want to do, you can literally create anything, but just make sure that everything, it shouldn't have a gradient, I will say, and it should be like just a solid object. But you see, even if you wanted to create like some crazy letters, like a letter C, then you can go crazy into it again. Oops, sorry. I don't know. You can literally. Very cool inspiration for our um next year's 36 days of type yeah <laughs> amazing Kat says you know. can... anyway go back oh no worries Kat says um you can apply warp and all sorts to make a brush or symbol yeah the symbol as well is a good one. i don't use it often but uh i've used it in the past so it's, it's actually very good very cool so for everybody um, that's joined late today, David is doing an illustration um, for us in here, uh, recreating the picture uh, that we, we've shared um, at the top of this page and just showing you how he, you know, re he recreates this using Illustrator. And um, it's a week of illustration, actually, to let you know. On Wednesday, Tony's here with David Cousins doing or well, illustrating a comic page in fresco mm -hmm. and then on friday uh, rachel presky will be back and rachel will be doing a mural in her office so um again a, a week of illustration which is um it's really fun and if you have any questions for david by the way pop them in the chat mm -hmm. yeah this is so good so what's your dream project to work on then david like what's something that you would love to um like, Definitely not commercial work, but I, I love yeah. everything that is, uh, don't get me wrong, I think uh, commercial, um, when I mean commercial work is sometimes uh, it gives you a limited uh, creativity, if it makes sense. I like briefs that are very open, maybe urban, very colorful, very let's experiment something new. Because uh, sometimes, don't get me wrong, uh, it's nice to have a brief, but certain companies are very the limit you and I think uh, you can really shine if you go out of th thinking out of the box than sticking to the brief but they might yeah. be scared that it doesn't work for them uh, depends uh, really but I think uh, definitely if you allow me to have creative freedom those are the projects I really enjoy more because I think yeah. if you like if it's your kind of imprint in every work you do I don't know you put more passion into it if it makes sense is uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's your thing so you you have to i don't know you shine the better like that oh totally you're empowered to yeah. be creative you're not really really as restricted are you exactly um yeah okay that's cool nice and it's and it's mad you know you say that you um this began like you but they asked you to draw on a wall um and then, then this led to the trainers and all these the trainers it's because they saw that uh, I was very, because you know what is the thing? I think um, um, people that I think, uh, the fact why people a lot of like it is just because they they always say like, wow, but man, you don't sketch. 
You don't do like a trace first. You don't sketch first. I just literally go straight into it. And people sometimes find it, they're always amazed asking me, man, how do you come up with things like this? I was, what is your process? But realistically speaking, sometimes I don't have a process, just what I have inside, it just flows out. I, I, I'm truly blessed, I have to say, but um, yeah. it's, just, it's just a gift. But, um, but then everyone, you know, some people are more inspired in different ways, but me, I just go for it. I mean, mm. yeah, yeah, I, I love that. And I love that people say, um, I think it was, who was it said it? A guy called Simon Sinek. Uh, Simon said um, that it was a gift is forgiving. And so if you've got this gift that you yeah. can share with people and influence and inspire people, then I, that is you, you're giving your gift. Exactly. Um, and that comes through in your work, as you say, all the positivity messages and mm -hmm. and in your doodles and things, right? So uh, One other thing I will say is just try to collaborate with many people as you can. Because I think, uh, don't get me wrong, a lot of, I think some people are afraid that if they work with other people, people might take influence from the work. But in reality, mm -hmm. the reality, the way I see it is the more you collaborate, you don't have nothing to lose, but as you learn, the other person will learn as well. Because um, by collaborating, is uh, it's just a different process. It's opening your mind to new things, new... I don't know, collaboration. I collaborate with a lot of people. I'll, I'm literally all about collaboration. If you tell me tomorrow, David, let's sketch together, I'll be in for it. I say, let's do it. Let's do something amazing. Oh, I love it. And it's yeah. simply because um, art is there to share. Art is there to see, art is there to show other people that uh, if you come from a scenario that you wasn't able to do it, if you see another artist coming from your similar scenario, that person will look up to you and say like, oh man, you, um, you're my hero, yeah. but I want him to be the hero of the next generation. So it's, uh, I, really, I truly believe in that because I think yeah. as a community of artists, we should be more united rather than everybody individual artists because I think the impact will be very different in the world, you know? Oh yeah, 100%. Oh, definitely. Oh, see, so, yeah, <laughs> so Stuart says in the chat, so uh, Stuart says, uh, so David, you've got the foundations, um, the colors and the boldness. And so this is how you can build and flow with others and mm -hmm. bounce off, you know, other creatives. And Gareth, maybe Maddie sketches and leave the colours to David. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if you can hear the boing. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> it's amazing. In the in the background, I love Tim sound yeah. effects. Oh my gosh, yeah, the colours that you've got are really good. I definitely need to be a little more disciplined in uh, in not going crazy with the colours, but. Um, Oh, but you you could you could go crazy with the colors. Uh, I, I really mean that. Uh, like uh, even if you use crazy <laughs> color, you can still get away with it. Does a is as I said, that's the experimenting part of it. You know, testing well, yeah. things that are normally not working, uh, but yeah. it can work eventually. Well, there you go, everybody. You heard this from David that these colors. I mean, you you didn't see what I made. It was pretty shocking. It was um. It was part of a game show that we did, and there will be another game show uh, again. I think we're planning one for um, October, maybe Halloween or, or something like that. But um, Angus says, Maddie, just get away with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just so much fun. But I love the fact, David, that you're always up for this. Like you're up for, if someone said, David, let's draw, let's do something together, you're up for it. Um, the collaboration is, is great, and this is, you know what we need this is where you know you can be inspired you can have a laugh it's, it's brilliant because we just grow with it i believe like when you collaborate and you share it's a, it's a growth for everyone everybody has a win in it so yeah it's, it's it's so true like even in the competition yesterday it wasn't for me it wasn't about the competition it was more meeting the people that have always seen the work and i said wow the guy is yeah. uh, amazing and then you just meet them very humble people very nice people yeah. and i think that's the beauty of it is a lot of people people know me for my work but people don't really know me that well if it makes sense because i'm always working and i am um, when people see me i say like bro you're amazing you're so humble but it's like this with many artists you know so the only thing is that you, you mainly see our work. You never see us as person, you know, like face to face. Yeah, totally. And with the um, 
you know the the competition that you did we were you mm-hmm. all given a um because everybody's drawings i noticed there was like a character or there was like yeah. a so were they giving you a did they give you all a brief of a uh, we had a uh, headlines because there was uh sponsored by um, buzzfeed so they had like some headlines from buzzfeed buzzfeed uh, and they were above you i above saw the us. headlines in yeah. the pictures okay so I think that was the challenge for everyone because depending on the headline you could have drawn good or if um, it's something that you normally don't draw that is the challenge within the competition. Uh-huh. So um, it was actually beautiful because you know some people are very confident in their own st- uh, style or things they draw but the title can be really what makes you a winner or not a winner I think and yeah. don't get me wrong there was oh. so much there was so much talent uh, in, in that competition so very happy to take part of it because um, don't get me wrong it gives you also a bit uh, confident boost in yourself as well i think yeah oh definitely i was kind of watching through instagram like this at the <laughs> window just look just trying to like you know see as much as i could behind the scenes and you uh, know videos that everyone was sharing and um, is it on a website that we could all look at is, is there like if a if you're on, on the um, uh, there's a twitch channel but if you go through the world illustration series the they should have a link yeah we can all find it to have a look oh amazing yeah this kind of stuff is so cool yeah really cool and look at this you've been drawing for well 12 it's 12:41 now and um you've almost completed your your image it's brilliant actually it's slightly different as i said <laughs> oh yeah but uh, yeah good. that's so good so any big plans for any more kind of Posca drawings, any collaborations, clothing or trainers, anything like that coming up that you can talk about? Uh, I mean, at the moment, no, but uh, I'm already in line up, uh, not this week, next week. I'm going to catch up some of the artists uh, from the competition and uh, I want to do some amazing work with them, I'll be honest with you, because don't get me wrong, sometimes, uh, especially when you work freelance, I almost feel like, um, you have so much work all at the same time, every time. And when it's quiet, you know, you have to make the best out of it, you know, because sometimes yeah. I feel like either you have so much work all in once and then you have those period where it's just quiet. And then when it restarts again, thousand projects all at the same time. So it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And you've um, you've collaborated with a lot of people so far. As you mentioned, you love to collaborate with people. Mm-hmm. Um, who's been the biggest inspiration for you so far that you've collaborated with? I think uh, based, uh, I would say I did like one little one with um, Jason Naylor, but was just a bit of typography. I don't know if you know Jason Naylor. No. He's from uh, New York. And uh, the reason why I think the, his message is beautiful. It's all about love, it's all about union, it's all about... And he gives a lot of bright, vibrant color, rainbow colors. I don't know, it's, um, I like artists that bring, um, I don't know, bring a vibe or something new to the city they are from. Or like, I, ju- I don't know, just put something that people look at it and say, oh my God, amazing, this is, mm. this is such a nice message. And I think Jason Naylor does it very well, actually. Nice. I must have a look at this stuff then. But then um, people like Andreas Chuka used to be my uni friend. Uh, then uh, Ani Rudmeta, the big fat minimalist that is in India at the moment. Those are other two artists that, because they have been in my um, university, um, yeah. they are my. I mean, I met Andreas last week as well. He came from Hungary, but um, they are the people that really. When I started working with them and doing things with them, they are the people that literally changed my view within design. They they let me understand how far we could have gone in life. And I don't know. It's like, I think certain people, when you work closely with people, not only they motivate you, but they let you believe in yourself. And I think those are the people I look up to most of the time, you know? Oh, love it. Love it. Yeah, you need a kind of a class of... Um whatever year you all graduated some kind mm-hmm. of sticker which is like class of 99 or whatever yeah you need something like that for those uh, for that group that's so cool it's so good isn't it to work with really inspiring people mm-hmm. um that really just you know give you great ideas but, yeah. but just even just encouragement actually at times yeah. sometimes they don't need to give you the ideas it's just the encouragement to keep going 
yeah. and keep you know working on those projects and and because uh, it's a reality like a lot of designers especially at the very beginning i always say this like they are so passionate the, the work is amazing but they're having difficulties finding jobs and sometimes the fact that they don't find often jobs uh, uh, brings in mind those kind of, I call them the evil thoughts in your mind. So they say, oh my God, why am I not making it? I'm not good enough. Um, and uh, by doing that, it's kind of, uh, they feel that insecurity. But on my end that I've been, I've struggled before coming to this process. It took me longer than others, but I always tell people, doesn't matter how long it takes. If it's destined for you, it will come. Doesn't matter if it's now or later, but if it's the right path for you, it will come eventually. It will come back to you yeah. because it is, I believe, in destiny. If you go there, Same. it takes time. Even if it takes longer, don't abandon it. Like, always keep it close to you because the moment that you yeah. abandon it is maybe the moment that you will shine, you know? So. Oh, exactly. Gareth agrees and says totally in the yeah, chat. So I believe that too, David. I yeah. would say if it's for you, it won't go by you. Thank you. So I completely agree with you. Um, oh, definitely. Oh, this is so good. It's, um, you know, it, your work is so accomplished. If you look at, you know, your website and just how you scroll down the gallery, you know, how your images come alive with animation um, and all of the colouring, you know, it's, you've, you've definitely, you can see that this is your work. You know, David, you've definitely got the style. Thank um, you. It's really vibrant, you know. Um, yeah, really vibrant work. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Really good. This looks good. It's like playing cards almost. Then ah. one thing I will say as well, like um, a lot of times, like I love typography a lot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, I mean, I usually have this little secret, maybe I will share. Is um, normally I do a lot of grids, and I think a lot of people like when you want to do blocky lettering and things like that. Uh -huh. I make this kind of grid. Sorry, but then just take three lines, copy yeah. it, flip it, use the pathfinder as usual, cut it out, uh -huh. and because you have this grid now, you can literally make all the letters, all the letters you want. Let's give it a Y. You see? I see. And you can always, uh, depending, you can use circles, you can use stroke lines. And when you cut it out, always with the pathfinder, then you just delete the shapes that you don't need. And you can create your own lettering, your own typography. You can make it curvy, brushes or... Love it. That's a good tip. I need to keep like a page just for, um, yeah, because I do love the 36 days of type, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So I need to keep a page of tips and stuff just for that alone, just the next year, yeah. all of the tips that people have given. You see, um, talking about the power of the community, 36 days of type, you see, I think the idea is phenomenal. But you see, when artists come together, how beautiful. I mean, everything is yeah. so different, but it's so versatile. There is grain, there is culture, there is... Uh, and that's why I love the project. I, uh, I try to attend every year, but this is the first year I finish all the letters, <laughs> have to be mm -hmm. honest. Because uh, uh, yeah. I use it as an excuse to experiment what I've learned in After Effects. That's why this year, I wasn't expecting the, uh, such a strong feedback from it. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I saw that the whole collection was done and I win it, I was like, wow. Like, Amazing. it was mind-blowing because, you know, there was so much talent in between, you know. Me and other five guys won it. But uh, great job to everyone, I have to be honest. That's why... If any body that's so good, David. Yeah, we we um I think I got to G. <laughs> ah yeah. No, but don't get me wrong, it's uh it's it's a tough one because depending if you have project, I have to be honest, I I did uh, you see if this you can do something like this in an hour, moving yeah. it will take you another half an hour and things like this. Um you could do a lot, but sometimes you know you have a project, you miss one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a tough one, huh? It is tough. But it's definitely a good place to be inspired and inspire others, I guess. Oh, yeah. Hey, and um, Stuart, you definitely win the um, the prize for the best question in the chat today. Um, Dave, he's asking, um, David, what's your best workflow tip or shortcut? 
Um, when you mean workflow in terms of, uh, sorry. So something like, um, you know, like a workflow tip that you showed us with the blend tool earlier, or or just like just how you just did them with the grid, creating letters with the grid. Like oh. what's your, your best workflow tip? Or um, um, I'll be honest, the letters are good. Uh, I think uh, sometimes you have even, uh, how do you call it? You see, when you was mentioning the blend tool, I'll make a silly example. Uh, sorry. Let me just quickly show you. Like you can create really stunning. Pardon, eh? I'll be back, just preparing the window. But definitely, I think for everyone quickly, after you can see this, this uh, I put this as a list because this uh, if you use this, uh, you can come on like crazy conclusion. The alignment pathfinder, I will say the swatches because you can um, the swatches you can incorporate patterns as well. You see, like patterns. If you want to put like some texture, some dots or some lines. Actually, I will show you here. That's cool that you summarized them there for us. Yeah. Because they're like the main ones. Those are the, you see, if you just want to put like some extra tone on oh, it. Oh, cool. Or you can also, you see, when you were talking about symbols, you mm. can create actually your personal pattern into it as well. So let's say you do line works in a different way with different angles. You can actually make it a pattern and then you can even come up with more interesting, you see. Nice. That's that's cool. You see, when uh, blend tool, I think is very nice because depending how you use it, because people use it for different things. But what I like is sometimes you want to create like some dimension or some perspective. Let's do it here. And do you do this a lot? Like, is this your go-to? Um, yeah, like yeah, because you see, everything that I did just now is literally shapes. It, nothing is drawn. It's just cutouts on cutouts on cutouts. And if you look at the process, as example, it's very simple. You do circles, squares, and um, sorry, I forgot how you call this, but you see, even the fact that you can drag down, oop, pardon, just one, you can drag down a corner, mm -hmm. then you can you can place something here. Look, you cut it, you cut it out. You merge it again. I don't know. It's so flexible, and I think the Pathfinder tool is is one of the best tips I can give you. If you play around this composition, like there's so many outcomes and so many things you can do. It's simply because let's have a look. I'll quickly show you here. Okay, so now we have a slice of cake. <laughs> Always know. good. It, it cake will, on the stream. That's it. <laughs> with a cup of coffee or a tea. <laughs> yes, David. <laughs> so brilliant. Well, you see, and it's only like, you can literally work with shape and just evolve it, make yeah. it more interesting. You see, take this, you see, this is a nice combo, Pathfinder yeah. with the stroke. So let's say, let's do it again. You copy it, paste it in front, put the internal stroke, you can put as much as you want. You see, you can make another hole into it. So depending literally yeah. how you use it, you can really come with so much interesting shapes and form. And it's, I think people don't look at it because they're like, oh my God, you can just cut out. But in reality, you can do so much more with it. You see? Yeah. And this is already a hole, then you can put the eye popping out in After Effects or things like Amazing. that. You do make it look effortless though, by the way. You're making it look very easy now. But can I be honest with you? It is. But it's just because you see it doing it by me, like, oh, wow, that's interesting. But it's really, it's truly simple. But I think it's just, uh, you remember what we were saying? It's the process of the mindset of the artist. We can do the same thing, but maybe he will have not think about doing it in a certain way, but he used a different option that is still in a different window of the illustrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh, cool. anyway, let's put this one back here. 
Do you work with patterns much, David? Like, do you make patterns with your work, or do you find uh, that you just like a lot of collections of shapes? Yeah, you can. You can. I did patterns before. Like, I mean, we can do one even here quickly, just to see. Depending on what you need. Because I worked for a company, uh, I think based in Jersey, uh, the Roosevelt. They do shirts, uh, polo t-shirt, and it's like all over a pattern. That's why mm. I, I'm very into pattern as well. But I've just learned this in patterns. Um, so this yeah. is, yeah, I'm interested in this. So we will normally go here in object. I'm just doing a simple, but then you can use a different, wait, actually, let me put an extra shape just in case. Stuart says, um, snapping is on to speed up alignment. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Alignment actually is quite good because every time that you do something, just make sure things are straight before you want to export it for After Effects because then sometimes when it moves uh, and uh, it's on different layers, you might see a bit of, you see, yeah. Mm. And then, as I always say, you can always group everything and re ungroup it later. Yeah. Gareth says, command plus you is everyone's friend. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> After Effects. Genius, says Gareth. So normally, here we go. Object, you will go on pattern and make a pattern. And obviously here, when you go to this option, you will always see like, you can, Yes, uh, and uh, you can literally go crazy, put the height, the distance in between every element, uh, you know. Very cool. And it's, and it's very simple, and you can literally do it with anything, and now you will see that it pops. If, for example, I wanted to do a background for this, and just to okay i'll come uh, um copy and paste it in front then now you will find your pattern just in this window and that's the great thing it's very it's something very simple but let's say like you have like a scenery a scenery you want to do mountains or you can yeah. always use those kind of overlay patterns and then you put it in a background and it's literally a 10 minutes work is uh oh. it's very it's very good actually very good. That looked very good. Then another. Oops, oh, sorry. Go. Go for it, go for it. Then I will say like another one is um, when you copy and you use Command D. Let's say you press Alt and Shift, uh, drag down this, and then with Command D you can literally copy a thousand of them in one shot. That is another thing that you can use, especially when you're doing like brushes. If let's say we bring this into here again, Art Brush. Mm, let's go this side and then look you can literally you see and you make it a little bit distorted if you make the stroke smaller it will be shorter if you make it bigger it comes back to the right proportions and you can always use here you see yeah if you change the brush definition it creates even more you see wow it's just it's just very different and i think Underrated, underrated, Pathfinder and Stroke, but you can make some magic with it. And uh, I think it's just about if you start understanding it, you can make things very simple, yeah. but really looking good. Or you can make even something crazy, um, crazy complex, but it will still look amazing. Oh, very definitely. small things. It does. Um, and you can see there's so many shortcuts and things, um, you know, that you shared today. Pathfinder mm -hmm. is definitely something that's come through. Um, you know, that you've shared today a mm -hmm. lot in, in what you've made. And, and we've when... been on for nearly an hour. We've got one minute left, David. Okay. Is there anything okay. else that you'd like to share in that, in the last minute? The quicks uh, blend uh, from here till here. Blend, so. And this I like a lot because sometimes you want to recreate like, uh, you know, like sticker effect from something small getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Very good. You see? So you can literally 
and that give you a nice perspective, but it always keep the shape in the right uh, right proportion rather, because the brush sometimes can go out out of it. But mm. well, uh, Stuart says simple techniques, but amazing mm. creativity. Thank you. Very true. Well, David, it's been so lovely having you with us today. Um, I okay, had sure. no idea that you were, you know, winning, you know, one of our winners of um, the uh, 36 Days of Type. And so seeing you, meeting you now, after mm -hmm. seeing your work in that, um, it's just, it's so good to, to meet you. You've said some you. really good tips today. And I think one of the things that I've definitely taken from it is just the, your ability to put positivity into all of your work and and really make sure that that message comes through in your work and you can definitely yeah. see this on your website for sure um <laughs> it's so good this will live on youtube everybody so if anybody wants to watch this back you know definitely go there we're in a week of illustration this week as i said tony's here on wednesday um with david to do um comic book illustration rachel's here on friday to do that and today has been amazing with david oku please make sure you follow david on instagram uh and um and we'll see you again soon uh, so thank you david and thank you all very much appreciate bye, it everybody bye, -bye.